Um, do I introduce myself? Man, Christine. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Shibi, and I'm a rising sophomore at Harvard College studying biomedical engineering and music. I am Dumavia Digwe, and I'm a first year at Harvard College um, intending to study applied math and economics. My name is Artha Jonasa, and I am a rising sophomore at Harvard College. My name is Christian Malachi Porter, and I'm a rising sophomore at Harvard College from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Grace. I'm going to be a rising sophomore. I'm Maya. I am in the class of 2023 at Harvard, um, and I'm from Detroit, Michigan. My name is Alex Renee. I'm a rising sophomore at Harvard. My name is Alexis Queen. I'm currently in Southwest Florida, and I am a rising sophomore, um, part of the class of 2023. My name is Aaron Shirley. I am from Chesapeake, Virginia. I'm a rising sophomore at Harvard College. I'm intending to concentrate in history and science with a possible secondary in either African American studies or global health and health policy. And I also am intending to get a citation in American Sign Language. I'm really glad Christine invited me here to talk to you guys and she's using her platform to uplift Black voices during this really trying time. Christine, who is an amazing individual, asked me to speak on my Black experience. So I thought I'd just share a few words. The past few months, weeks, days as a Black woman have been absolutely exhausting by every single definition of the word. The last couple of weeks and just going on almost a month and a half now, I think, have just been incredibly painful and traumatizing and, and just saddening. It's very exhausting to have conversations that discuss the depths of racial injustice in the United States. I just want to talk about how I navigate being Black at Harvard. My Harvard experience has been really interesting, but I think it's been a really, really good time. And um, I'm really glad I chose Harvard, to say the least. I'd be lying if I said that I didn't have an overwhelmingly positive first year. Like, I really loved every second of it, but I don't think that had much to do with school itself. It was more of like, me finding my people and like being happy with that. I'm really involved in the black community. I think from the second that I got to Harvard, I realized that I wanted to be involved in such a dynamic and supportive community. I'm on the executive board of the Black Students Association, board of the Black Pre-Medical Society, working on organizing the upcoming Black Health Matters Conference. And academically, I'm involved in the History of Science Department and African American Studies Department. And I'm looking at the ways that race, medicine, health, and science all interact. Being at Harvard this year was the first time I really had like a strong Black community. And in most ways, it's amazing. And, you know, you're constantly reminded of your power of being Black in an institution that was both built by slaves, but wasn't built for slaves. It wasn't built for people that looked like us. I'd first like to preface that regardless and despite all that Black people go through on a daily basis within the United States and outside of the United States and over the centuries of oppression that we have, have suffered, being Black is truly amazing, you know? Being Black is just something I'm so proud of. Every time I go to a Black org event or I go to a club meeting and I look around and I see so many Black people in positions of power and just making, working to make the school a better place. There have been a lot of change makers at Harvard that have been pushing Harvard to do the right thing and to really help the Black students that are on campus. While being Black at a PWI reminds you of, reminds you of your Blackness, I think, being in black communities at a PWI reminds you of your power. Even though I really enjoy being part of the wider Harvard community, there are definitely some experiences that are unique to being black. Harvard does a decent job in recruiting black students, but I feel like that's not synonymous with supporting black students or uplifting black students. Even when you go to an institution like Harvard, it's so disheartening to see that people don't value your presence. The administration doesn't value your, your presence enough to say three simple words that Black Lives Matter. I think Harvard has a long way to go if they want to really be an anti-racist institution. I want to give you guys some background about me as a student before I came to Harvard. For background, I went to a public high school in the South, so I definitely expected to experience less racism than I did in my hometown. However, being Black in the United States, you know that you would never escape racism wherever you go. First, I want to say that I never really felt like a black student. 
Um, I went to a predominantly black high school. It's a public high school in my city. It was under-resourced and underfunded. I never felt like a real minority, of course, in IB classes where I was sometimes the only um, black male in my classes. I still would walk out and be able to see people like me. So coming to Harvard was a bit of a culture shock for me. And the more that I think about it, the more that I think about how many times I was put into like uncomfortable spaces. When I'm one of the only one or two black people that occupy space I'm in at Harvard. I was the only black student, black male in my math class, which is a smaller class. I was the only black student in my chemistry section. Generally like first semester, I had no black teachers or professors or TFs. Second semester, I had a black TF. It was in my ethnicity migration and rights class. Um, so take that as what you will. Harvard is not perfect. You know, it's considered the bastion of higher learning and a beacon of intellectualism across the world, but Harvard's not perfect. And there's a lot of ways that an institution that seems liberal and seems super intellectual and progressive actually perpetuates anti-blackness every day. I know some other people have talked about being black at Harvard. Um, all I'll say is it's interesting. Um, it was a tweet actually. Um, it said the wildest thing about being at an Ivy League is um, seeing people debate your humanity for course credit, right? It's mentally, emotionally taxing when we're discussing literature from people who are completely racist or studying science with Charles Darwin, who is a blubbering racist and that kind of stuff and, and watching my peers and watching my professors uplift these people and ignore that past. But I think more than just like the academics, one of my most bothersome experiences of being a black woman at that college and like being an applied math major with interest in like business or like finance or like consulting i'm definitely severely underrepresented firstly for being black and like secondly for also being a woman i guess now i actually speak about racism at harvard at harvard this mainly presented itself through microaggressions and if you don't know what microaggressions are you can look them up but I can give you some examples. People make it seem like, but you don't experience real racism. No one calls you the N-word. And I like, I distinctly remember times where I've experienced microaggressions. If you ask me, where are you really from? If you see my name, or if you comment about how a black person acts white or compliment them for being eloquent or well-spoken, these are all microaggressions, and over time, they can add up and play mind games with black students who are just trying to succeed. I remember when I got into Harvard, people in my class, the white individuals in my class, said I didn't deserve to get into Harvard, and the only reason why they accepted me was because I'm black. Even before I had applied to Harvard, when the Asian American like Student Coalition, I guess, I forget their exact name, came together, and they said, well, some black students don't even deserve to be here. We have better grades than them. I had experience when I was visiting during Visitas and it was me and a group of other black students and there was other students there also with us um, who were non-black. And there was another student who was white and he um, took it upon himself to try and police the area. We were all, you know, having a great time in a common room. Common rooms are open at all hours of the night. Um, they're open to everybody who can swipe into them. And this student took it upon himself to be like, okay, oh, y'all need to get out. Like this common room closes, which common rooms don't. And he was saying, oh, my proctor said, you know, to STFU, you know, using vulgar language with us. I guess he then took it upon himself to invite the non-black students who are with us back into the space. If I had to talk about one thing, like one thing that's just really truly annoyed me to my core, the responses to the Black Lives Matter movement. I expect a certain degree of just like laziness and fake empathy from the school itself when crafting these statements. But what does bother me is the statements from the clubs that I'm a part of. One of the clubs that I'm actually a part of is the largest undergraduate organization at Harvard. And it's for women. Um, 
and black women are just viciously underrepresented in that club. A lot of the clubs are appealing to their target audience when they are making these statements. The people who look like them, who just need to hear that they care about the right thing. It can be hard not to feel like I'm just a token black person in this space to represent some sort of diversity. It's mentally, emotionally taxing being the sole voice for the black community in classes where I'm the only black person. I think that it's ridiculous that you make a statement as an organization and have like some of like your few again very limited black members um you're gonna ask them to read over the statement to like make sure it's like good and says everything that it should it's really easy for people to just lump all black people into one category but the black community at harvard is actually very diverse there are so many different kinds of black people. The black community is not a monolith. There are first and second generation African immigrants from a host of different African countries. There are generational African Americans. There are mixed race people. And let's not forget about intersectionality. There are people that are Afro Latinx and more. Before coming to Harvard, I really had no experience with African students and, you know, people who had a, a super strong tie to, you know, the motherland. As uh, a descendant of enslaved Africans in, you know, this country, I don't know where my family comes from. I don't know that kind of stuff outside of the African-American experience. So the point is, when you're talking about black people, you shouldn't treat it just as a monolith. The black community is actually very diverse and you should really acknowledge all the different identities and experiences we have. Some of the things that I feel like Harvard can really do better at, most importantly, is giving black students a physical space. Maybe for the Ivy League in general, I'm not gonna speak for any other um, schools, um, but Black students are kind of tasked with making their own um, spaces at PWIs. Harvard has no multicultural centers, which is, it's kind of wild. Uh, there's no physical space for black students or really any other affinity groups on campus. And I think that makes it hard to find your footing in a space that's not really meant for you. The university um, has not given us a black space in particular. They haven't given us a multicultural center. Um, and they feel as though it will segregate the community if we were to have something like that. But I would like to give a counter to that. Being black at a predominantly white institution is not easy, but it's made harder when you feel like you don't have a physical space to call home or a place where you can really be yourself. And being a black woman, I spend a lot of time in spaces that I'm not comfortable in. I really push myself to enter those spaces. Like it's a conscious decision that I made. We have to be black students at all times. And that's something that's true that regardless, really, even if we had a multicultural center, I can't take my skin off. If we do or were to have, a uh, multicultural center or a black space, we would be able to um, find more solace in branching out from the black community. It's just really, really disheartening, but I find a lot of solace in knowing that I have some of the very best classmates in the world and my peers have educated me even more deeply than I could have ever imagined prior to being a student here at Harvard. And I have the opportunity to pay my knowledge forward to my non-Black peers and to just speak out on whatever platforms that I have. So if you are non-Black, if you are white, living through this time period is existing right now, you might feel called out. You know, you might feel like people are talking crazy on the internet. You feel like people are against you, they're attacking you or whatever. And Honestly, I can't tell you how to feel, but the one thing I can tell you to do is to lean into that discomfort. Really sit with that, think about it. And nobody's calling you racist, nobody's calling you bad names and nobody's like hating you for it. But what is important is that you are acknowledging these things. I think right now what's been really important and where I've seen a lot of growth is when people are uncomfortable. And I know that that translates to non-black people being uncomfortable by conversations of race, but also the black community getting used to people engaging in spaces where it's normally just us. Wonder why people are calling you out. Wonder why your black peers are in so much pain. We rely on you um, as non-black allies, as non-black students, we rely on you to make these situations comfortable for us. I know it's hard and I know that it takes a lot of emotional energy out of you, um, but that's where I think a lot of change happens is when people are uncomfortable. A lot of people, me included, have been stressing the fact that allies need to educate themselves, have been stressing the fact that there are books to read, movies to watch, all of these things that allies should do to learn, <laughs> quite frankly. Your black peers, your black friends, neighbors, classmates, whatever, we are only an expert on our experience. I am not an expert on blackness. Toni Morrison, Angela Davis, ta Coates are all more well-equipped at explaining this stuff than I am. 
look up books, look up speeches, poems, documentaries. They can help you dive into this journey to educate yourself. I guess to be a better ally, don't rely on your black friends to have to educate you. While you might have black friends, black teammates, black classmates, whatever, it's not their job to do the emotional labor of educating you. You also need to act on that education. Education is really nothing if it's just going to stay stagnant in your brain and you're not going to use it. For allies that are specifically in academia, actively include black issues in your work, right? Remember how you just went to go educate yourself? Apply what you're learning in class and what you're researching and what you're teaching. Apply that to Black issues. If you're a Gov major, identify what issues there are in the government now that are perpetuating white supremacy. Take notes on how you think you can fix them because you're next in line. For the pre-med folks, you know, why is there such a high fatality rate in pregnant Black women? And how, what are the steps to bring that rate down. For comp side people, you know, how can we use software and and AI and machine learning to bridge the gap in education between suburb schools and inner city schools? At the end of the day, I really hate to call this a wake up call because it's not. This has been going on forever and the alarm has been going off. People have just been hitting snooze continuously. You know, I think we are really witnessing a shift in our sense of normal, which is much, much needed because our sense of normal is oppressive for Black people and Indigenous people and other communities of color. I hope that's something that keeps its momentum and, and especially on campus, I hope that the changes that are happening in the world are reflective of people's mindsets. What can we do to dismantle the systems that both give us privilege and are constantly killing us and, and, and taking black bodies and black black lives? And I think for me, that's been educating myself, radicalizing myself, um, trying to understand where my place in all of this is and radical acts of consuming black art and consuming black joy and reminding myself that being black is so multifaceted. Time and time and again, we prove that we can commit compete at the higher academic levels, that we can be amazing doctors, we can be amazing lawyers. Not even we can be, we are amazing professionals. We are amazing artists. We are amazing anything, you name it, we are amazing at it. But yet they try to discredit us every single time. It's not even the allies that we have to convince that Black Lives Matter because you guys are the ones who finally caught on and realized that this is something that important, but it's your friends and your family members that need to know that Black Lives Matter. And quite frankly, they're going to be more receptive to you advocating on our behalf. Allies need to talk to each other within their own racial lines to please help push this movement forward. I feel like for the longest time, it's been okay and even celebrated, you know, for non-Black people to be nice and to be friendly and to not see color. But that's not what we need right now. Race informs everything around us, whether you want to admit it or not. Allies need to step up and step in when they see something happening. And I know that that is very, very scary. I do, I understand that. But what you have to understand is that being Black and existing while Black is an existence of fear. We're facing fear every day and every day we are being brave and that is not by choice. So I'm asking you to choose bravery. I'm asking you to choose what we are forced into every day in order to just support us. And understand that these systems are not broken. They're working exactly as they were intended to work. You know, the subjugation of Black people and the oppression of Black people is not a side effect. It, it is the goal of a lot of these systems. The systems are working exactly as they were built to uphold white supremacy in general. So I'm happy that we're beginning to see the dismantling of each and every one of those. Like we are going to make Black Lives Matter 
happen with or without you guys we're going to call for justice with that with or without you guys we're going to change this country with or without you guys so it's not like i'm begging you guys to do this but it'd be helpful and much appreciated because it's gonna happen by fire or by force make sure to uplift the voices of your black co-workers and black classmates and black co-researchers and i encourage all these black students out here who are possibly watching this video to apply to harvard um to set your dreams high to do it um you can do it and i want to see you here it really takes nothing to uplift black voices using your platform using your privilege using whatever to uplift the stories of black people and allow them to be heard what i personally want is not for you to ask me if i'm okay because nothing about this is okay but i need you to take the steps to make sure that in the future life for every single black person is okay the ball's in your court at the end of the day it's time for non-black people to be the change that they want to see and to help create an equitable society i challenge you to do that challenge yourself to do that black lives matter and i hope that we can continue to grow and become better as a result of everything that's happening right now. So yeah, that's my thoughts. I hope that was good. I started rambling. I wanna thank you guys so much for listening to me and I wanna thank Christine so much for inviting me. Thank you guys um, for tuning in and I wish you guys all the best. Thank you guys, be blessed, peace.